Um, we're still following yeah. social distancing. We're still going to have normalcy. Um, and it's getting hard. Easter was yesterday. It was definitely a different Easter for a lot of people. How was your holiday, Chief? It was uh, it was very nice. It was uh, quite different for myself as well. My uh, my my favorite daughter, which happens to be my only daughter, and uh, she and I did, uh, did did a few miles of hiking yesterday, and then uh, I actually went on went uh, and picked up dinner from my parents and and dropped it off to them, uh, and uh, didn't stay for very long at all. They're in an apartment here in Baldwinsville, and just dropped it off, and and uh, not not our usual uh, Easter dinner that I cook and. And I know a lot of families, as I was looking online and social media yesterday, uh, were doing very, very similar things. So it was uh, it was quite unique. How about yourself? It was really nice. Same thing. It, it was kind of nice to connect to people more on social media than normally I ever would. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw some family Zoom calling, which was nice, um, that type of stuff. So we did our Easter egg hunt. I bribed my teenagers with money, and they still participated in the hunt. So that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> So what's been going on this week? Well, um, we, we've had uh, what I would describe as a, as a good week here at the, at the department. But uh, there, there's a few things I'd certainly like to uh, to make mention to, to the community. Uh, I was talking with some of the officers uh, over the weekend and then this morning. And uh, they've indicated that, that uh, our citizens, uh, in their minds, are, are doing a pretty good job of of social distancing, especially when they're patrolling the neighborhoods, they see people out and about walking their dogs or, or going for walks with, with neighbors or friends. And uh, they have actually seen them trying to, to maintain that social distancing there. We still are getting some phone calls about people utilizing the school grounds. And uh, I've had some communication with uh, members of the school district and uh, the grounds are open. However, they really don't want people utilizing the fields and the, uh, the, the playgrounds there. Um, if people go for walks on the school grounds themselves, uh, which what some people like to do and, and kind of cut through from some of the neighborhoods to get into the center of the village, that's certainly acceptable. But uh, the, the fields and the playgrounds, it's difficult for people to, to maintain that social distance in there. So those they've asked for, for people not to utilize. And, and, we, and we did get some, some calls on, uh, on those. Um, our social, uh, uh, actually our, uh, our business check program, uh, that's going very well. We actually, uh, have found, uh, a few businesses that, um, uh, either had left their, their, their doors unlocked, uh, just because, you know, there's a lot of people's minds now and we understand that. So we contacted the owners and, uh, and got them down there to, to secure the businesses. But we actually also found a few that because this past week we had a couple of days that were a little bit warmer and people obviously opened up the windows to get some fresh air in and uh, those were left unlocked and they were open uh, a little bit. So uh, we're just going to ask everyone to, to make sure if, if you're operating a business that is essential, that's still uh, still running, to make sure when you leave that the doors are locked and, and the windows are closed and locked because uh, most of the time, that's enough to, to prevent any crime from occurring. You know, I do have a question. Obviously, this time of the year, you guys are doing the checks more often. We had talked about the blue slips that you put in. Yeah. Um, that that I have a building, which we discussed in the village. If it's 2 a.m., do, do you guys call the business owner? Like, if I leave my door unlocked, do I get a call at 2 a.m. or do I get notified the next day? Because obviously, 2 in the afternoon, you would call, but just kind of curious. Yeah, if, if it's 2 a.m. and we have the information... And we, and we do try to keep it as up to date a business directory as possible. Um, we'll call you at two o'clock in the morning to okay. let you know your, your business is, uh, is unlocked and, and unsecured because we'd rather get you down there then and, uh, and have you secure it than call you at seven or eight or you call us when you get in there to say, eh, somebody came in there and, and broke in. So um, if, if, if you operate a business in the village and you know that maybe uh, – um, the updates uh, need to be done. You've got some new people that have some contact information or new contact numbers. Contact the police department during our normal business hours, 8 to 4, uh, Monday through Friday, 635-3131. And uh, uh, someone will answer the phone. Let us know what, what business you operate and uh, that you want to update your, your business card directory with us uh, because uh, we'll we'll put that on our uh on our computers and all our patrol cars so that way our officers have access to it. So the most up-to-date information we can get, uh, it will be the best for us. 
Okay. And that's good information anyway, because that was something that I didn't know I never thought about, but it would make sense for you to know who to contact for the, the business. So um, sorry to get you off track there a little bit, Chief. Oh, but... no, no, that's, that's, I, actually, that was a good track to be on because uh, one of our goals, once the whole pandemic is, is over, or, or at least when our economy starts to operate and our businesses are functioning again, is we do want to make contact with, with every business in the village. Um, and uh, make sure that the contact numbers we have are current. And uh, sometimes uh, people come and go or businesses are sold or key employees move on to other, other positions or they retire out. And uh, sometimes the information we have might be a little bit stale. So we'd like to refresh that and, and to ensure that we've got the most uh, comprehensive and accurate information that we can have as well. So if we can get a jump start on that, and if people want to call us again, 635-3131, uh, Monday through Friday from 8 to 4, we we do have someone here answering the phone, and uh, you can provide that information to them. Okay, perfect. Um, yes, I'll probably give a call this week just to make sure you guys actually have my information because I never thought about that. So, Good. Um, so any, anything else different as far as either with the village or with COVID-19 that you want to reach out to the, to the community to talk about, Chief? Yeah, well, one, one thing I've gotten some notices on is that uh, there seems to be a number of individuals out there looking to either take advantage or perpetrate some sort of scam uh, surrounding the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And it doesn't take the criminal element long to, to, to come up and devise new methods of trying to extricate money from, from individuals. I know I mentioned this a little bit last week, but uh, there, were, there were some more notices that came through. And uh, I would just caution uh, our residents to be very, very careful if they get any phone calls or emails indicating uh, that uh, people are looking for money to either support the COVID-19 uh, fight or uh, one of their loved ones is now quarantined and needs their help and uh, they're not speaking directly to that family member or oftentimes some of the scams that are perpetrated, especially against our, our elderly population uh, and uh, uh, several months ago, my parents actually were called indicating that one of their grandchildren was in trouble and they were out of state and they needed some money from them. And as soon as uh, my parents called me, they weren't 10 seconds into the conversation. And I said, it's a scam. It's a scam. It's a scam. And I've gotten those calls from other people I, I've known uh, throughout my career here. And uh, they're, they're very believable. They're, they're very good at what they do. So just be extra vigilant during this time period uh, about those types of things because uh, people are out there and those scams do exist. You know, the, the new one, and I'm sure you're aware of this, Chief, is just I've um, had conversations with some of my friends and contacts with is uh, uh, Facebook profile. People are creating Facebook profiles of somebody in need and they're trying to get um, help from some of the organizations uh, that way. Uh, same thing. I'm assuming they can contact you maybe to verify that information or um, just before you send any any money or any supplies to anybody. Um, always verify who they are. But Absolutely, because we've got officers on duty 24 hour, hours a day, seven days a week. So if there's any question at all, pick up the phone and call 911. Uh, either one of our officers will, will show up or they might call you on the phone. Um, and sometimes that's enough just to to talk to the officer and, and get that reassuring voice. Hey, this is what um, I'm hearing. This is what uh, people are saying. This is what I've received. Is this accurate? Is it true? And uh, our officer can can more than likely vet that information to determine whether it's legitimate or not. Okay, good. And we're still not having any issues from what I see in the village with vandalism or anything, people having too much time on their hands creating havoc or chaos. Everything's pretty much smooth or? You know, knock on wood right now. Um, you know, we're still getting our run-of-the-mill calls. Certainly, sometimes our domestic disputes are, are occurring. We knew that that would probably be the case. I know there's been a number of articles written uh, nationally and locally on, on that particular subject, and uh, we are dealing with those. But, uh, you know, for the most part, people are, are, are doing a good job social distancing. Uh, we would ask everyone to, to please try and stay home as much as you can um, and, and just follow those guidelines that... Uh, both the, the federal government and, 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 and the state and, and locally have, have put out because uh, we think that it's, uh, it's the most important thing. We're trying to do that ourselves. And uh, as much as everyone can do that, uh, it'll allow us to, to really do our jobs 
a little bit more effectively. Okay, that's good to hear. I thought maybe um, somebody would show up at my house yesterday. I have a dog that um, I inherited from my father who ate half of my chocolate lasagna pie from Jesse oh, Cake. No. So there, there was a little um, animosity going on in my home between myself yes. and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm quite sure. Is your dog okay after eating all that? <laughs> he did survive the evening. Yes, he did. Oh but but I thought if you heard anything, that might that might have. I'm close enough to the station that maybe something could have been heard about. No, my yeah. cake. Uh, so. I, I know exactly where you live now, and uh, <laughs> uh, so not that I didn't know where you lived before because you lived right down the street from me. But uh, um, yeah, no, we, we probably could have heard the screams uh, right down here in our building. So yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. So, but anyway, I, um, it's good to know that once again in the community, everybody's at least trying their best. Um, there's a, there's a sense of, um, understanding for how severe this is. And you're always going to have those people that kind of take advantage of, um, of people. It's not going to go away. So just to be aware of it. Yes, so. absolutely. And I, and probably every week I'll, I'll just keep reminding this just in case somebody new happens to, to, to jump on board and, and watch the video. Um, I see how many people watch it every week and, uh, it is, uh, it's surprising to see the number, but it's, uh, it's great as well, because I know we're reaching a lot of people and, uh, a lot of people get to hear, Hey, this is what's going on. And, uh, you know, we have had some incidents where some of our local stores that are, that are open, people have gone in there and, and stolen some items. And, mm -hmm. uh, I even mentioned to, to one of the offices that were they stealing food? Like, you know, I, I'd get them some food and, you know, in the office it was like, no. They went two days in a row. We're stealing Doritos and, and, and an energy drink. I said, well, then I got no sympathy for them, you know. And, and I said, if they were trying to steal peanut butter, you know, probably the manager, he's a nice guy at this particular place. He'd have given it to him. But um, no, they, they weren't hurting for food. They were just wanting, you know, the luxuries of life, not the necessity. So. Well, you know, Doritos has cheese, right? Even if it's a fake cheese, so technically it's a dairy. No? I, I, I suppose so, yeah. And I've also read other articles that, if, if you're shy and if you're out in the woods and need to start a fire to keep yourself warm, a bag of Doritos will light right up. Too. So, <laughs> um, I don't know how good those things are to eat, but you know, depending on what you're looking for. So, um, but uh, you know, so, so we're still dealing with, with everyday issues, uh, even though some of those things have subsided, some of them haven't as well. So, um, but you know, I, I continue to say balls was a great place. Uh, it's got uh, great people in it. And uh, we're going to try and do everything we can to uh, make sure people are as safe as possible and the community is as safe as possible throughout this entire time period. Well, thank you, Chief. We appreciate you guys being out there and um, seeing you and the support that you guys give back to the community as well. So I appreciate you taking the time, as always, to talk to me and kind of give us an update of what's happening. Sure thing. Look forward to it. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon, Chief. Bye. All right. Take care.